Hey, this is Mad Hatter, and today I'm going to show you how to do what I'm doing behind me and build a Minecraft object from a 3D model. The build behind me is based on Castle Grayskull. Um, it's on Slack Lizard's Patreon server, which is called Simply Bedrock. And I've been working on this for a little while, and I've had a lot of questions on how I came about, and I've had questions on where did I learn about this program? How do I use it? What do I do? How do I make something big and crazy like this on my own? So here we're going to get into it and I'll show you what I learned, how I learned it, and where I got the files from. So this is the Minecraft wiki page for Bitbox. This is how you use the program. This is where I learned how to use the program. And it's not exactly clear, so I thought a video would help out a lot of people. The Next thing that you'll see is I'm going to Umagine, which is a file service that will give you 3D models. These are made by independent creators and they're posted online for you to use. There are specific licenses included with each file, so please respect the creator. I am the creator of this file, so I have the rights to use it however I use. That does not mean that everyone's going to let you use their file for free and for whatever you want, so check with the license provided. So now we're going to put that file in the binbox folder. As you can see from my binbox folder, I've done a lot of work on getting Grayskull the right size and shape that I want. That can be a little frustrating, so hopefully I can help you get there a little faster than I did. Um, now that we have the file transferred, it is the wrong format. It needs to be an OBJ file or a couple of other file types, but STL which this file is, is not a accepted format for Binbox. To do that, we're going to use MeshMixer. MeshMixer is a program provided by Autodesk. I use this one because it's the one I learned how to use. There are many other files you can use for conversion. MeshMixer has a lot of other tools you can use, like there's a sculpting tool, which I've used to make things like the Farnsworth bus that you see. Uh, you can learn this tool if you want, you can learn another tool, but you need to export an OBJ. Inside of Mesh Mixer, there is a couple of tools that are in the sculpting window, and those tools are really useful for doing things like simplifying a mesh or pushing, pulling, creasing, whatever things you do when you're sculpting clay to make a 3D model. In this model, I'm not going to do any optimization, but if you have problems with it rendering or taking too long, you should probably simplify it using the Mesh Simplify tool in the uh, Mesh Mixer software. That'll reduce the polygon count. Reducing the polygon count means it takes less time for your computer to process. After you do that, you can save and export an, an OBJ, and then you can import that into Binbox, and that will work just fine. I saved this as Farns in the folder that I have Binvox installed. So same place that I opened the file from. Now I'm going to open up the PowerShell, which is a command line editor. You can use CMD if you want. It doesn't really matter. Uh, just a command line tool needs to be open. Now the next thing we have to do is find Binvox. Bin, you do that by typing B-I-N and hitting tab. Now that you know where Binvox is at, you can type dash dash help and that will give you information about how to run the tool. It's the same information available on the wiki, but it's in the program, so when you forget, it's easy to access. The really important commands from the help file are dash "-d", and dash "-rot x", and dash "-rot y". That's basically all I use. I don't know what the different file types are, but I just use the Mira because that's what was recommended in the tutorial. So to start with, we're not going to actually size anything. We're just going to run it as dash t space mira and then the file name that we want to run. This will take a few minutes to run. This tool does use your graphics card, so the better graphics card you have, the faster it will run. Uh, I'm going to fast forward through this executing. You don't need to worry about what's going on. When it gives you back the command line at the end, that is when you can start looking at the file.
So now what we're going to do is actually view the file that we made. As you can see, I've been editing, so I've seen, I've had a few more revisions of Farns come up, so we're going to end up being on Farns 4, as you can see right there. So we're going to go to Viewbox, and it will pop up a new screen, and Farnsworth is now huge. He's 250 blocks, 256 blocks tall, and he's also the wrong way around. So we're going to quit by uh, pushing Q, and then we're going to run a, another command. So this is the command we started with, the uh, mira minus T. We're going to run rotate X, and we're going to run rotate X a second time. Rotate X only rotates uh, 90 degrees, and because I've already done this, I know I need to rotate X a third time. This is just via trial and error. I don't really have a good solution for that. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to resize it. I'm going to choose 100 blocks tall. So that's D equals 100. So now my command is binvox.exe minus ROTX minus ROTX minus ROTX minus D 100 minus T Mira and then farns.obj. So we'll run that one and I'll be right back. Okay, now we're on farns 5. So this file is going to be the right orientation. You can right click to zoom in and out. You can center, uh, normal click to spin. You can press X to view it from the side, Y to view it from the top, Z to view it from the front. And we're going to go to the top view. We're going to press S. S goes to single layer. Now, if you push J and K, J will go down a layer. K will go up layers, and you can see what you need to build. If you go to, if you push A, it will make it a checkerboard. So that way you can tell if you should be in an even block or an odd block, depending on where you centered your build. This is how I actually do most of my building, is I will see on the command line, you'll see what layer you're on, and then you just kind of count and go around in a circle and build it exactly as it's shown. It, I find that building it block for block precise doesn't really matter. It's just kind of getting you the structure the way you want to go. If you look, oh, I hit Q to get out. If you go, let's look at Farns number three, which I think is 50 blocks tall. Here you can now get a feel for how small or how big you really need to make this. And for 50 blocks, this is actually probably how I would act I build it. But I would come back through and put stairs in places like this so it gets a little bit more smooth curves. You know, put some put some different blocks on the bottom to make his teeth look right. You know, just basically play with the model in Minecraft because Minecraft has more than just cubes. And this program only knows about cubes. So that is basically all I have. You guys can now play with this yourself. You push, as I said, you push Y to get to the top, S to get the single layer, and you just go up and down with J and K. Clearly, you want the object to be as small as you can because it's a lot of blocks to place. If you make an object half as tall, it'll probably use one quarter the number of blocks. Anyway, that's it for me. Hopefully, you found this interesting. Hopefully, it's been helpful. You guys have a good day. And that's Mad Hatter out.